In this video, we're gonna take the time to go ahead and create our very first Java servlet. So what we're going to do is go ahead and fire up Eclipse, and we're gonna to want to select File, New, Dynamic Web Project, and we need to name our project. Let's go ahead and call this Hello World Servlet, and we'll just leave it in the default location. That way everything will always be in the same place on our drive, we can find our code very easily. And your target runtime should already be set up for the Apache Tomcat version that you're on, especially if you've gone through the previous videos. If you haven't done that at this time, you'll want to select your runtime, which will be whatever your Apache Tomcat or perhaps your Glassfish server if you're using that version. And make sure you stay on the dynamic module version that makes sense. This one is 3.0 at this time, and our default configuration is fine. We don't need to add anything for memberships or working sets. And then we don't need to do anything here at the source folders, but I want to go to this final page and select Generate the Web XML Deployment Descriptor. Now what we're going to see as we go through using code with Eclipse is that we'll find a lot of the stuff that we can do in the web XML has been integrated into the environment to help us out. But I want to make sure that we have a good example to be able to get to that web XML file and manipulate it manually. So let's go ahead and include that. So that brings up our project over here with our Hello World servlet. You can see a few of the folders. Right now the ones that are most important to us, just so that we know, is the meta INF with the manifest. That's going to be generated for us. And at some point we may have some modifications to that, but not for a while. Then we have the web INF folder. Now this is where we're going to store some libraries later on, as well as the fact that we have the web XML here that we just generated. So the web XML, if you click it for the first time, will show up as the design view. And on the design view here, you can see that everything is there, but you can also click to the source. Now we'll get to that next time, but we just want to be aware that it's there. So for right now, what we're going to do is go ahead and create our first servlet in the resources folder. So we select the source, right click, and we're going to create a new package. And the reason we're going to create a package is because we want to keep all of our servlets together in a way that keeps them easily organized, and then we can make a different package for all of our actual class code. And we'll see how that works together nicely in the future. So for naming your package, obviously name it something that you're going to be able to easily remember that makes sense. So you could use com or company, whatever your company name is, and then you would put your project name. So here we have hello world servlet, and then we could say servlets. Now honestly, most of the time we won't have our project actually named servlet, so it would make more sense than what this looks like. Let's make this all small so that we can remember it easier. Hello world servlets, not servlets. So that gives us the package. We don't need the package info. You can see that our package is now created, company.helloworldservlet.servlets, and let's add a new servlet to it. So our new servlet is just going to be hello world, just like any other Java hello world class that we've seen a million times. We don't have an existing one, so we'll go ahead and use this one from scratch. And here you can see, when you click next, it allows you to type a description. You can even add some initialization parameters if you wanted to have some of those, and we'll see how to do that in future lessons as well. And note that right now the default URL mapping is set to slash hello world, which is something that makes a lot of sense since we're going to have a servlet called hello world that we would just be able to browse to it by selecting hello world. You can also change some modifiers if you wanted to add some interfaces, but what's most important on this page is you can see all the methods that are possible within the servlet and you can click a couple of these to add them in if you'd like them. And note that do post and do get are given to us by default, and those are going to be the most common ones we'll work with throughout our course as well. The get is obviously the HTTP get request that is the request that's made to the servlet, and the do post is when you make the posting or you have a form and can actually send some variables and post request to the servlet. So we don't even need do post for this sample. I could uncheck this, but I'm going to leave it in there anyway, just so we can see it and see where it's at. And then if we ever wanted to add some posting stuff to it, it's already stubbed in for us. So we'll go ahead and finish this. And then we'll see our code comes up. And you note that it does have the package name at the top. And of course, we have some import statements. We have the IO exception. We have the servlet exception. And then we have web servlets and HTTP servlets. So those are the important parts that we need to have. Now, for this example, we're going to be doing some simple Java code as well as using the print writer. So we need the print writer, so I'm actually going to just change IO exception to star. That gives us both the IO exception and the print writer, and we don't have to worry about importing the specific libraries. Note the web servlet path here also matches our hello world, and we extend the HTTP servlet, which we talked about in our overviews. So the HTTP servlet is, of course, the most common servlet that you'll be programming, probably the only servlet that you'll be programming, to be honest. It extends the general servlet, 
And so therefore we have all of those methods available to us as well as the HTTP methods. So we have our two methods stubbed in that we selected do get and do post. You can see them both here and both of them take the HTTP servlet request and the HTTP servlet response. So they get a request, they have a response as well, and you can work with both. And of course they throw a servlet exception or the IO exception if things go wrong. So those are both checked exceptions that are in place. So we're going to change the do get servlet code so that we can handle a get request. All we're going to do is some very basic Java code here just to prove both that we can access the response and work with it, and then we can spit out some HTML and also just do any Java code that we so desire in our servlet. All right, so what we're going to do then is have our print writer, print writer, and we'll name that out, and that print writer out is going to get the response.get writer. So this gives us access to the response, and we can actually write to it. And then what we need to do is some basic Java code so that we can prove that we can do something. So let's do something very simple like get the square root of four. So here we'll do a double square root value equals, and then we'll do math dot square root 4.0 so that we have a value. So that proves that we can do any Java code that we would expect to see in our actual servlet if we so desire. And we can actually write out now some HTML to the screen. So what we'll do is say out dot print line and then we'll just code some HTML, an HTML tag, followed by a body tag, and then we're gonna use an H1, which is this a heading tag, if you're not familiar with that, and we'll align it to the center. In order to do that, we need to use a single tick, since we are already going to have the double quotes being used to create the string that we're actually outputting, and that will still be just fine. Close off the H1 tag, and let's just say, hello world servlet, and then we'll slash H1 to close off our H1 tag, and then let's go ahead and close off the string and hit enter. It sometimes won't let me do that once, so I have to hit it twice. And then we're gonna concatenate on some more onto this string, so we'll add this on. Essentially, let's put in a breaking line, and then we'll write out the square root, just some regular text here, the square root of four is, and then we'll actually concatenate on the result sqrt value, and we'll finally close off all of our HTML. We can actually put a breaking line here if we want to formalize it in case we ever added anything else, but we don't need to. And I'm going to go ahead and just make a new line here again, just because of the fact that the screen room is running out there. You don't necessarily need to if you had more room on your screen. And we need to close our body tag, so slash body and slash HTML. Now hopefully that will wrap up our HTML code and it will print out everything. So let's go ahead and save by control S and that will also compile and make sure everything's working. Note there's nothing in the do post, but if we wanted to start working with that, it's ready for us to do that. And we didn't change anything about the constructor or any of the other things. So our servlet's ready to go. Let's go ahead and try to run it. And basically when you do this, you have to choose your server every time. You can select to always use this server when running the project if you want to skip this part. And the next part will tell you what's available. So this is not here anymore, so I'm going to remove that. But you should just see your servlet. And we're going to go ahead and say finish. And my server's already running, so I have to restart it. If your server's not running, it will go ahead and just start up. But every time you change code, then you'll have to restart your server in order for that code to propagate out to the server. And you can see that as we end up with our code running, the Hello World servlet does print out that the square root of 4.0 is 2.0. So what you can see here is we have HTTP localhost 8080, which is our port of course, Hello World servlet, which is the name of the project, and Hello World. And that wraps up our first look at servlets. If you want to have a little fun, you want to see this, you could actually copy and paste this into a browser and you'd be able to see that it's actually working on the regular browser even outside of Eclipse.